Good evening, Eagle's Nest. Welcome to Digging Deeper Moment number 13. We've seen that the Sermon on the Mount has three major sections which date back to the rabbi scribe Ezra. The first section is his Midrash, which is an explanation of the Old Testament, which we have labeled the Road to Happiness. The second is his, hal his Halakha, which is an application of the Old Testament. We haven't labeled that yet. His Haggadah is the third section, which is an illustration of his teachings, and we'll be looking at that in a few weeks. Jesus' Midrash, his first section, has four parts. We are now on section four, and we pick it up after we looked at Matthew 7, 5, 17 through 20, in which Jesus is talking about how he interprets the Old Testament. We've labeled Matthew, the fourth section, Matthew 5, 17 through 48. Happiness comes from getting off the escalator, which will become more obvious as we go through this. We said last week that Jesus is contrasting his righteousness with that of the scribes and righteousness or scribes and Pharisees of his day. And we saw three things. There's three aspects of this that Jesus is contrasting. First, he's contrasting inner versus outer righteousness or matters of the heart or the external body. There's the minimum versus the maximum form of righteousness. In other words, in Jesus' day, the, the rabbi had created loopholes. They would say there's great commandments and lesser commandments, and you kind of could get off uh, scot-free if you just didn't do the bad commandments, and Jesus is addressing that. Then there's small sins that lead to big sins, which I'm calling the escalator. These are things that tend to escalate in our lives, as we'll see. We want to keep these things in, three things in mind as we look at the five illustrations of Jesus' way of interpreting the Old Testament and explain it, because that's what he's doing here in Matthew 5, 17 through 48. He's giving his midrash, his explanation of the Old Testament. We have to remember that the only scriptures Jesus would have read would have been our Old Testament. And we have historical evidence to back that up. Our 39 books of the Bible were the same books that Jesus used to read in the synagogue that were his Old Testament. The first thing he addresses, the first illustration he gives of the way that he interprets scripture is on anger. Let's read it together in verse 21. It says, You have heard it that it was said of those of old. You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause, and those words without a cause, by the way, are not in the best manuscripts. People believe they were added for clarity. And my college professor said often for confusion. So he's basically saying if you're angry at your brother, shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you, are, you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you're on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you've paid the very last pen penny. Jesus says, you've heard it said. Now, when he says those words, Jesus is being very clear about something. In the Jewish tradition, the Bible, the Old Testament, is called mikra. That word means something which is read. Now, in order for something to be read, it first had to be written. And the Bible has been written down. Moses wrote down the law. The prophets wrote down their prophecies. And those writings have been handed down to us. Now, the oral teachings of the rabbi, they were not written down. They were passed down from one generation, from one rabbi to another, from a rabbi to his disciples, orally. So when Jesus says, you have heard it said, he is clearly speaking about what is called now the Mishnah. And the word Mishnah means that which is repeated. The Mishnah is the teachings of the rabbi. They were eventually handed down, or they were, they were handed down orally till about 200 A.D. when they were put in writing. And so now they're written down. But at the time of Jesus, they were passed down orally. Jesus is now contrasting what's written in the text of the Scripture versus what the rabbis say about what's written in the text. That's very important. Jesus is addressing their custom. They had a custom. Not only did the rabbi hand down their teachings orally, they had a custom of listing the commandments from the greatest to the least. Now, that would cause them often to devalue the, least, the lesser commandments. And it had a negative effect on how people looked at the Old Testament. So what Jesus does here is he just, just, 
the poses. I can't say the word. And he needs to see. Don't edit that. Just leave that in there. He sets anger, <laughs> the lesser sin, against murder, the greater sin. That's a word called just the pose or whatever. I can't. I have to look it up now. I can't say it. But that's funny, isn't it? Jesus, he puts them, he compares them. And what he's trying to show them is that for his disciples, he doesn't want them to list greater commandments versus lesser commandments because in the end, that has a negative effect. Now, in doing so, he addresses the three aspects of righteousness that we've been talking about. First of all, he deals with the maximum versus the minimum. It's not enough not to murder, he says in this text. He says, don't be angry with each other. Jesus is telling us, his disciples, that we should give the same attention to minor commandments as the major ones. In other words, don't begin to break little commandments. It's not okay to do that because that will bring us, that'll begin to teach us to not to value the word of God. This is a big deal today because there's a lot of people out in the Christian community now beginning to devalue the Old Testament. It's very dangerous. That is something Jesus never did. But secondly, he's dealing with the internal versus external righteousness. He says murder is an external thing. It's an external expression of anger, but it starts in the heart. And what starts inside of us slowly becomes manifested on the outside of us. Murder starts with anger, and it ends in death. The third thing Jesus says is to get off the escalator. I want you to picture an escalator. You know, when you go to the mall or when you used to go to the mall, you know, you get on an escalator and take it down to a lower floor or two floors. Once you get on that escalator, it's hard to get off. And you know, that escalator, when you get on it, it's going down, it's going to take you down. This is what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is saying what other rabbi had said, but didn't really focus on to the, to the level that Jesus did, that we need to get off the escalator of breaking the commandments of God as soon as possible. Because there tends to be an escalation in sin. When we begin to sin, which is simply breaking God's commandments, doing the things that God doesn't want us to do, there's a tendency for them to escalate in our lives. For instance, whoever is angry, is, he says, is in the danger of the judgment. Now, the judgment he's talking about here is the local court, according to William Barclay. It's the local court, like going to a local claims court or a civic court, just go and get your, to pay a ticket, whatever. It's a local court. It's in the village, a village court. Whoever gets angry with his brother, he's saying, is in danger of being hauled into court. But then Jesus says, whoever says raka, which is a term of insult, Anger has now gone from being internal to more external, and the consequences go up. He says, shall be in danger of the judgment. Well, that refers to the Sanhedrin, which was the supreme court of the entire nation. So you can see an escalation. Jesus is saying, you know, it starts out inside with anger, and the consequence of that is you could be in, hauled in court. He says it turns into insulting others, okay, and tearing them down, and that could result in a higher consequence and what Jesus is emphasizing here is the escalation, is you could actually end up in front of the Supreme Court, which is not something you want to do then or today. And then he says, whoever says you fool, which is a slanderous term of contempt, he says is in danger of hellfire. So literally, he's talking about the fires of hell. Now, what Jesus is doing here is he's speaking in what's called hyperbole. I can say that word. Hyperbole is an exaggeration for effect. His point, however, would have been well understood by those who heard him. They had heard other rabbi talk about the escalation of sin. Jesus isn't the first to talk about that. We have other rabbi, history of other rabbi talking about that. But Jesus really changes their focus when he says, don't be listing sins out like what's the greatest commandment and the least commandment. Value the entire word. That's what Jesus is saying. Because he was said in Matthew 5, 17, verse 20, I did not come to abolish, which means to teach incorrectly. I came to fulfill, which means to interpret and apply the Old Testament correctly. He said, I didn't come to give you loopholes for not doing the Old Testament. This is a common myth for New Testament Christians, they, where there's a tendency for people to think the Old Testament means nothing anymore. It's all grace in the New Testament, when in really what the New Testament, the New Covenant teaches us is that we can get power, we can get help to fulfill what the Old Testament was intending to teach in the first place. This is not legalism. What Jesus is doing here is not legalism. It's midrash. He's explaining the Old Testament, and he's telling us to value it, to value all of it, to don't cherry-pick what's in there. And then Jesus gives us a solution to what we should do when we're dealing with anger. Anger, we're all going to deal with anger, or with anger, we all get angry. He says, make reconciliation more important than going to church. And I know this sounds so wrong to 21st century Christians, but if you read this text again in your own time, Jesus is saying, Internal righteousness is so important. 
Not doing the minimum, doing the maximum is so important. Getting off the escalator is so important that when you're at church at the altar, which was all kinds of temple imagery that would, would have been conjured up here that we don't have time to get into, but when you're at church about to offer your gift on the altar, which was, took a lot of pain, it cost money, it was a process. It wasn't you just walk in. You didn't just walk in and offer your lamb up. You had things to do. He says, you get all the way to the place where you're giving it to the priest and you remember that somebody, you've made somebody angry. Now, I don't want you to notice, you've offended them. You've made them angry. He's saying, this is so important. Stop your worship right now and make it right. Or he says, in the end, you're the one who's going to pay. What he's saying is, get off the escalator of anger. Get, get off the escalator, start by, which starts with the lesser commandments. By breaking the lesser commandments, he says, it's going to lead, if you're not careful, to breaking the greater commandments. He says, get off that escalator before it bites you. And that's some good wisdom. We might need help, and that's why God has established the church and pastors and counseling and all kinds of good things, but the message is clear. Get off the escalator as soon as possible. We'll see you next week.